All right, we're back for another week, and the happy hour is getting ready to get going. Uh, David Arnett is down at the beach. Obviously, I came back from three weeks almost, gone, two, one, half a week in California, and two in Asia. We're going to talk about that coming up, and uh, hopefully David's going to join us. Michael Bruno, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, and let's see if we can get David... Uh, to put his can uh, or bottle down, and let's uh, talk some real estate here. I hope everybody had a good week. It's boy, the market is is hot, hot, hot as the weather is here in Birmingham, and so we're really excited about that. Uh, just not a lot of inventory. Hey, Ruby, greetings uh, to you in the Philippines. Thanks for your hospitality. Uh, I mean, we're going to talk about it, but if you if you haven't had the opportunity to uh, visit the Philippines, they're some of the finest people as a whole uh, that you'll meet anywhere in the world. They're phenomenal. There's David. Let's see. David, let me see if I can get you on here. Let's see. Here we go. Add David. All right. Here we go. Let's see. Hope he, sh he has a shirt on. There he is. How are you? Man, doing good. How you doing? Good, 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 man. I'm glad you wore a shirt because that was going to scare me. I know, right? Absolutely. It's kind of bright out here. It got the shades going. Can you see everything good? I, I, I see all those balconies. Yes. Good. Well, how's everything going down there? Man, everything's been really good, really nice. It's uh, It's been hot the last couple of days. First part of the week was was perfect but man it's been hot the past couple days now where are you in orange beach <laughs> hey you, uh brady eldridge said you better smile today hey i'm working on it man i can't help but smile down here man it's beautiful it, so how was is. the uh how's the philippines man i tell you life-changing trip over to the philippines and i tell you I, I i was mentioning it earlier you know we hit uh nice nice drink there um, we hit the Philippines, Singapore, and Malaysia, but I tell you, uh, <laughs> Trey Fava Cousy, uh, Got the Fava group represent, I'm telling you, it was life changing. I've never seen a nicer, uh, more giving people than the Filipino people. Uh, Amanda and I came back changed from that because it put a lot of life in perspective, if you will, about what we do, uh, every day and, um, and just phenomenal. I, you know, I want to thank Ruby Rain, everybody uh, over there that we met. Uh, Narisa, if you're watching this, just uh, phenomenal stuff. And we want to, you know, if anybody's looking uh, to hire uh, abroad uh, some folks to help them in their business, you won't find a better people and, and, and more giving people than the Filipino people. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Now, didn't you spend part of part of your trip in uh, in Singapore? Yeah. Hey, Singapore, they're eating a piece of grass out of place. They're eating a piece of trash on the ground because the first fine's two thousand dollars. So uh man. man, it's tough, but That's... I'm telling you, it was uh amazing. It, it basically if you can build it, they will. Because they, they, they got lots of money. Uh but phenomenal. The airport over there called Changi Airport. It is an, we spent three and a half hours just touring the airport because it, it has swimming pool. It has, uh, let's see, movie theater, uh, butterfly garden. I mean, just on and on restaurants. And then for you, they had a place to get a cold beer. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was phenomenal. Malaysia, we went to Malaysia, went to the top of the uh, Patronus Towers, which is the tallest twin tower in the world, number 11 in the world. So that was a lot of fun. Um, 15 hours, you know, uh, we were nervous about Julia, uh, our eight-year-old, on a 15-hour on a flight, but uh, I think it was harder on us. We're getting older. Man, that's awesome. That's, that sounds like a great trip, and uh, saw a lot of good people. Glad you got to catch up with Ruby. That's yeah, awesome. Man, so, uh, so awesome. We tried to, we uh, tried to keep the, the happy hour going the uh, last couple of weeks without you, but uh, just not the same without you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and yeah. well, we're back here and we got everything running, but, uh, oh, I, would, I will tell you, Amanda really did get mad at me one time. Cause you know, I, I try, I pulled a Clark Griswold 
and decided that we were going to live like Japanese people. And so I booked a uh, Japanese style hotel room. And my eight year old, it was how basically she could touch the ceiling and you slept on the floor. And uh, needless to say, Amanda was not too happy with me for about an hour when we got there. Um, but it sounds exciting. Yes, but I mean, I'm hey, surprised we don't have more pictures hey, from that. Rome, when in Tokyo, live like a Tokyoan. When in Tokyo, you've got to do Tokyo and things. Yeah, one more thing I want to tell everybody, you know, because you and I have talked about the credit cards in the past and what different ones to get. The priority yeah, yeah. pass that comes with uh, a lot of the paid cards saved our rear end, man. Lounge access, because, you know, eight year old eats everything. Everything. And. Oh, God. Mama and daddy may want a glass of wine or a cold beer, and it's free with the priority pass that comes with a credit card. So, uh, yeah. And by the way, David, uh, we have some two folks asking, uh, where's Courtney? Oh, she is, uh, she is back up in the room. Actually, I wasn't sure where we were going to do this. Uh, I'd rather be up in the condo shooting it, but, you know, the only good signal that we had was down here on the beach. So I had to come back down and uh, – the rest of the, the gang, the kids and everybody are are upstairs. You know, it's Thursday and we've been down here all week, so they're they're kinda of worn out by now and with with as hot as it is today, it's it's even even harder to stay out here a long time. But uh but yeah, we're having a good time. Yeah, well hopefully you'll get back here with some money, right? Yeah, you won't spend it all down there. Yeah. Well, hey, well, wanna talk about before we get into real estate real quick, you know, you and I like to talk a lot about finance uh, stuff. And one thing is hello to my mother. My mother is watching, David. So hey, Patsy. Hello. That's right. Uh, anyway, Clark Howard. It's terrible. Me, yeah. It's terrible, isn't it, Brady? I know. It's tough. <laughs> Rough life. Uh, well, you know, I was, I was gotten some questions over the last, uh, before I left about, and in fact, got one the other day. Uh, for my friend and guy that watches the happy hour was asking about debit cards and the use, you know, uh, every day about that. Cause they hear us talking about credit cards, those type things. And why we would say that over a debit card and Clark Howard, who you and I both love, you know, he calls them piece of trash, fake visa and fake MasterCards, And he does so for a reason because we really got to caution everybody from using on a regular basis. I understand a lot of folks are trying to get into the, uh, Dave Ramsey system of, uh, uh, not using credit and that sort of thing. But one of the problems is, especially if you go to the beach like you are, you're on the road, the protections that you have legally, just because it says Visa on the logo doesn't mean you have the same federal legal protections. And so be real careful about that. And also, and you've talked about that, you know, I've talked off, off the air about this, which is cash is powerful when you have it in your wallet. And once you've spent all that cash, it's gone. And I, yeah. I've seen you in a casino, you know, maybe once or twice at, at a roulette table, and they don't give you uh, cash. They give you chips for a reason, don't they? Yeah, I wish there was some uh, price protection on the roulette table. <laughs> yeah. That would yeah. make things a lot easier. But, yeah, I didn't realize uh, until I, I read some of that stuff or listened to some of the stuff that Clark Howard was doing, how much difference there is between the debit and the credit card. I mean, the debit card are really pointless. I mean, you have no protection over spending. You know, and if anybody gets a hold of it, they're they're wiping your account out. <laughs> hey, uh, Michael Bruno says he sees Courtney at the balcony. I think she's throwing all your stuff over the edge, though. Yeah, she might be up there somewhere. If you can see over there. <laughs> I mean, you'd think she'd log on here and see see her man on, on, on the air here, right? Uh, I don't know. It's not like she's doing anything else. <laughs> yeah, they're waiting on but you yeah, to probably see, go I, to dinner. I, I, but yeah, I think the uh, the the credit card protections are a big deal. I do too. Uh, especially, and if you're worried about fraud and all that, how would you like the fraud when you use a debit card? That thing's tied right to your checking account, and so when they commit fraud, you're relying on the bank to put the money back. Uh, yeah, and when you and, and if you're and if you're going to argue uh, transactions on your cards, uh, the debit cards don't do anything to help you with that, do they? No. No, no, no. And, and because they don't have the same visa protections, because what visas had to do in MasterCard as well over the years is with government regulation, it's had to negotiate some of these protections uh, into their agreements. And, and what they've done is uh, this is where we do want some government oversight. Right. So that uh, 
that when you go overseas that you'll be protected as long as you use that credit card. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, all right, man. Well, uh, talk to us a little bit about what's going on in the mortgage market right now. What are rates and where are we see yeah, everything uh, okay, going? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so mortgage rates have, have not changed a whole lot this past week. Um, you know, right now, 30-year fix is still about 4.5%, about 4.5. Uh, 15-year rates are around 4%. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about just the difference. I know, I know we had mentioned that uh, rates have moved up since the end of last year, from about four percent on a thirty-year fix to four and a half now. And on a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage, just to give you a, a little bit of context here, the uh, monthly payment is about sixty dollars a month higher from that wow. uh, uh, four percent to four and a half. Wow, so, that's... so not not earth shattering, but definitely. Uh, definitely, you know, going to hit the hit the pocketbook and and affect your monthly budget uh, as these rates continue to, to climb. Um, I know there's there was some interesting research you put put together this week for uh, some first time home buyers and uh, in roughly ninety three percent of, of first time home buyers now are, are the age twenty one to thirty five. Yeah, it's a it's a big spread. Yeah. And, but they're buying. They're the largest share of buyers right now. Um, here's the thing. They want what they want, right? So they're going to try to get it uh, in a market that's really, really tight. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, I think the other thing is, you know, I hear a lot of, uh, there's a lot of positives in the economy. I mean, obviously the stock market's doing well. Um, and there's a couple of stocks I want to talk about later on. But, um, you know, people are making money there. People are making money in the 401ks. Uh, wages are going up. So, you know, you look at these rates and you look at the increase, and, and I know there's some some stats out there. This guy was saying uh, there's going to be 5.6 percent before the first time home buyers pull out. Uh, which, you know, that's another another full point jump that that will affect uh, monthly budgets. But you know, we got these other things going up: wages going up, investments going up. So, you know. I think there's still benefits to home ownership, and uh, I, I so. think right now those are outweighing the the interest rate changes. But what what are you finding is a challenge though with the with so many first time home buyers, especially in this age range? Obviously, at the lower end of that range, what are the biggest obstacles you're finding for those people to get into a mortgage? You know, I think I think the biggest the biggest obstacle right now uh, for those first time home buyers is just education. And it's information. A lot of people are, are not aware of their options on a conventional loan for 3% down, 5% down, 10% down. And a lot of people are, are still leery of mortgage insurance, even though, uh, you know, mortgage insurance is has always had a negative connotation. Tyler Young, I appreciate it, man. I, I guess I just got lucky this year. Uh, but no, I don't. I don't live at the beach. I'll be back on Saturday and back in the office Monday, and we'll be we'll be working. But um, hold on, hold on, hold on, man! What I you tell you, there, there, David, you've been working there because I can tell you this much: he's closed two guys for us this week. You've pre-approved a couple other ones, so you've been working. Man, I tell you, the best day down here was Sunday, and ever since then, the workload has increased every day. So, uh, even though you don't want to work while you're here, it's still a uh, still a good problem to have. But, uh, but yeah, I think the benefits of home ownership is, is going to outweigh the, these these increases. Well, yeah. Ha have y'all noticed a a a wage increase amongst these the starting wages amongst these first time home buyers? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I think uh, I think the biggest thing is just knowing your options, knowing uh, understanding how the mortgage insurance works, knowing that you don't have to have twenty percent down. Uh, to get into a mortgage and, and the rates are still really low now. So there's still a lot of options for people out there. And, and you know, you just need to call somebody and, and get some information and figure out what works best for you. Well, you know, with with the supply shortage right now, what do you, what is your advice of positioning um, their, their budgeting? Because right now, you know, what I, I've been telling folks is, Instead of a two hundred and fifty thousand going to the highest part of your budget, let's look at houses that are two thirty to two forty, so that we can give ourselves some room, so we're not blowing past 
the budget if we get in a competitive situation and need to boost our offer a little bit more to get the house that we want. Yeah, I mean, definitely, you need to you need to to give yourself some room there, some some uh, leverage, flexibility. Um, I would just say, you know, I, I think some people right now are worried with the low inventory that they're gonna just run out and and buy the first house that, that comes on the market. And yeah. you know, obviously, you don't want to do that. You still want to buy the house for the for the reasons that that you're looking and, and the things that you like and want in your new home. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's just harder to find it, isn't it? Uh, you know, and, and uh, you saw last time we talked together, it was it was uh, the interest rates were kind of pulling back. They had gone over four and a half. They pulled back under four and a half. What are we looking at now? And are we still going to see that as we head into the late summer, early fall? Are we still planning on seeing a growth into the 5% range? Yeah, I think I think rates are still, uh, you know, the overall trend is still up, obviously. And, uh, you know, as we get through the middle of this year, you know, we moved up fast early on and now we're halfway through and, and we're at about four and a half with, with expectations of 5% by the end of the year. So uh, we made a big move early, but we're still kind of on course uh, for that 5% by the end of the year, maybe, and uh, sitting at four and a half here, here in July. So. Uh, the trend is definitely still up, but uh, not moving quite as fast as we were early on this year. Well, that certainly is good. You know, the uh, you know it's it's funny that uh, what we need in this market though is we need as many houses because the inventories are low and that lot bling, uh, I can't talk right, uh, and I haven't even been at the beach uh, having beverages. But uh, current market conditions here in Birmingham, we talked about it earlier very low inventory in fact um, we're at some of the lowest inventories relative to um this time of year because this is typically a very hot time of the year and this is you know year over year you know we, we've noticed that there was a 14 percent decrease so 14 percent less houses on the market at the end of june than it was one year ago 14% less. Yeah, wow. So. You know, and we've had this inventory problem for for almost the better part of a year. So, um, yeah, that's a big drop. And we're at the high. And what, what's interesting is that we're at the – this is the pinnacle of our buying seat. So what's really interesting, though, is that this is an audit. And we've, I've talked to agents from all over the country, and everybody's experiencing this, is that that heavy momentum – see, the problem is we have tons of buyers. We just don't have any houses to sell them on scale, that is. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're, we're rolling into the fall. It's going to be really interesting to see how this affects things because what is interesting, as you have another drink, um, is the fact that, that median and average sales prices are up 7% year over year because of demand that this low inventory has caused. Yeah. You know, so uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, the demand the demand problem is going to continue to be there. The the, the low inventory is going to cause problems, but you know, eventually, once we see this, uh, uh, you know, break up and some houses come on the market, it's going to be you know really busy for our business. Bro, no, you're right. And the you know what's other thing is home sales. Uh, yes, I forgot that part. David's always the one to have a beer. Um, uh two percent uh less sales from june of last year to june of this year which is uh pretty fascinating at this point of the uh, uh of the buying season because uh we normally don't see this and it's not again because people aren't buying houses it's merely because there's no houses to sell them that they want yeah absolutely you got multiple offers you got people fighting over the same house and but they're still in the market though you know David, one, one other stat that was really interesting was the foreclosures. I mean, in the in over a decade, we're, we're at 5% last month of all the sales were foreclosures. That's market-wide, and, and that is a such a low number. To put it in perspective, we were sitting at any one time, at any one month, around 30%, probably 2009, 2010, somewhere in there, and now we're at 5%. That's just crazy that the banks are because i know people aren't paying the mortgage still you know and yet we're still having that low 
of inventory where 5% uh, would be uh, a very low number. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, that, that's, that's an indication of the uh, inventory problem also because you don't have as many foreclosures on the market. You don't have as many buyers moving. Uh, I mean, obviously, that would be a negative reason for, for adding inventory, but uh, you know, I mean, I think the rates going up as well also is, is contributing to, to people staying put. Well, you know, it's interesting. We re- you and I had talked about it. We really thought that a lot of these folks were going to have to refi this year because they went into that five-year deal with the uh, mortgage modification. We thought that they weren't going to be able to pay it. And obviously, maybe if they aren't, they're not getting foreclosed on, but maybe we'll see it. And, you know, it, it's, it, you may sense that I'm sitting there saying it's it, it kind of like, oh, great. I hope some people don't. But here's the thing we know. We know some people won't, and we do need those that inventory to push our market even higher. Yes. Yeah, anytime we can get uh, get more inventory, especially as, as these rates rise, people or buyers are going to be uh, a little more antsy to, to make a move. So, you know, anytime well, there's new inventory coming on, it's going to well, help. If anybody that's in Birmingham is watching, uh, the southern region, which stretches from downtown down to Clear, down to Chelsea. Hey, Tara, I hope you're doing well. In Bentonville, Arkansas, the best realtor in Arkansas is is watching right now tara is an awesome lady used to live in hoover by the way um but but the area that goes from downtown down to clara down to chelsea that area strongest in our market average sales prices of 328 and virtually non-existent foreclosures i mean hardly any uh narissa hey narissa uh this is hey one uh she's a fantastic lady in corona i'm David, this is the girl I was telling you about that's going to give you a tour of the islands of the Philippines. So say hello to Narissa, David. Hello. Hello, Narissa. (laughs) Rick Knotts is on. Rachel Kelly's on. R. Kelly up front. She she filled in and helped us out a couple of weeks ago. It was awesome. She's right over there, too. Uh, Hey, listen, hey, before before we move on, I just wanted to uh, highlight a few few stocks, man, today. Facebook hitting 207. Wow. That's a big number from Facebook. Amazon up to eighteen hundred dollars a share. Uh, Netflix over four hundred dollars a share. So there's been a lot, of, a lot of movement in the stock market last week, and uh, a lot of these stocks are at fifty-two or all-time highs. And uh, right, it's a, just a big movement in the stock market right now. What, what about Netflix? Are you still high on Netflix? Man, Netflix is just really. Uh, you know, they have, have taken every hurdle that's come their way and just kept churning. They are making money, and the stock is doing great. $414 a share today. Um, that's surprising. Hey, well, i tell you this much, David. If everybody had taken our advice and, and taken our stock picks and not bought and sold like I did, I bought, made some money, sold them, and just held on, WWE yeah. at Folio, man, they'd be rich. Yep. Yeah. Buy and hold. You know, people tell me buy and hold is the best strategy. A lot of people like to play the swings and uh, to get in and out because it's not exciting to buy and hold, but that's where you make your big money. It is. And I tell you, uh, I think we're all scared. And if you're scared to get into the market with your 401k, get into the market. You're never going to time it right. You're just never going to time it right. Yeah. Yeah, if you go with a buy and hold, you are going to do well because timing, uh, time will always win over timing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, man, uh, we are going to call it a day and safe travels back to Birmingham and uh, y'all have a good time. All right, buddy. I appreciate it, man. All right. We'll see everybody same time, four o'clock next Thursday here on the Real Estate Happy Hour. See you later. See you guys.